Hello, welcome to the Film Ray training video. First of all, on behalf of everyone at BioFire, the company that created the Film Ray, let me congratulate you on your purchase. I'm sure you'll quickly see that not only is the Film Ray the fastest way to better results, it's the fastest way to more results. We hope you'll find this video helpful, both now as an introductory tool and later if needed as a reference tool. Among other things, this video will show you how to set up the Film Ray itself, how to set up and use the Film Ray software, how to care for your Film Ray, and of course, how to load a sample and use the Film Ray. You'll soon discover just how easy the Film Ray is to operate, but if you have any problems or any questions, please contact us. We provide telephone technical support at 1-800-735-6544. You can visit our website at filmray.com, or if you prefer, you can email us at support at biofiredx.com. No matter how you choose to contact us, we promise to get back to you as fast as we can. Again, congratulations and thank you. Chapter 1. Setting up the Film Array A. Setting up the Film Array system with one to two instruments Setting up the Film Array is a very fast and easy process. First, you'll need to find a bench with enough space for all the components of the Film Array system. For one or two Film Array instruments on the optional instrument rack, you'll need at least 36 inches by 24 inches. Keep in mind that the space requirement may increase as you add more Film Array instruments. You'll want to place the computer near the Film Array instrument for ease of use. Unpack the desktop computer and place it vertically on one end and toward the back of the workbench. Plug in the computer power cord. Place the Ethernet communication switch toward the back and plug in the power cord for the switch. Connect the Ethernet cable to an Ethernet port on the back of the computer system. The other end of the Ethernet cable should be plugged into port 16 of the Ethernet switch. Place the printer in front of the computer. Plug in the printer power cord and USB cable. Connect the keyboard, mouse, and printer to USB ports on the computer. Place the computer stand over the printer. Place the monitor, keyboard, and mouse on top of the computer stand. Plug the monitor into the VGA monitor port on the computer. Unpack the barcode reader stand and install it into the computer riser by threading it into the designated receiver on the left or right side of the riser. It should be installed on the side closest to the film array instrument. Once the barcode reader stand is firmly secured to the riser, unpack the barcode reader and place into the stand. Plug the barcode reader USB cable into the computer. If you purchase the optional film array instrument rack, unpack it and place it near the computer system. Unpack the film array instrument and place it on the instrument rack. If you're only setting up one instrument, we recommend, for ease of use, that you place the instrument on the lower space provided. Note that the instrument rack has four small round openings, which correspond with the foot pads on the film array instrument. Be sure that you have the foot pads in the four corresponding openings in the instrument rack. Connect the Ethernet cable and instrument power cable to the back of the film array instrument. Thread those cables down into the back of the instrument rack and out to the side towards the computer system. Connect the other end of the Ethernet cable from the film array to port 1 on the Ethernet switch. Now, power on the computer. Turn on the film array instrument by flipping the switch on the back of the film array near the power cord, and then give it about 2 minutes to start up. The light on the front of the instrument indicates the instrument status. No light means that the instrument is off. A blinking yellow light indicates that the instrument is being located by the software. A solid green light indicates that the instrument is ready for use. A blinking green light means that the instrument is running and a blinking red light or a blinking purple light indicates an error. In the event that a blinking red or purple error light comes on, please refer to the Film Array Operator's Manual, which came with your instrument, or contact technical support. To set up a second film array instrument, 
Unpack the instrument and place on the open space of the instrument rack. Connect the Ethernet cable and instrument power cable to the back of the second film array instrument. Thread those cables down into the back of the instrument rack and out to the side towards the computer system. Connect the other end of the Ethernet cable from the film array to port 2 on the Ethernet switch. Connect the film array power cable to a power source. Turn on the film array instrument by flipping the switch on the back of the film array near the power cord and then give it about 2 minutes to start up. Follow these easy steps whenever you set up additional film array instruments. Chapter 1 Setting up the film array. B. Setting up the film array system with three or more instruments. Even with up to eight instruments, setting up the film array is a very fast and easy process. To set up three or more film array instruments, we recommend using the optional film array instrument rack. Each instrument rack holds two instruments and is safely secured to each other with an instrument rack clip. First, you'll need to find a bench with enough space for all the components of the film array system. A film array system with 3 to 4 instruments will require at least 48 inches by 24 inches. A film array system with 5 to 6 instruments will require at least 60 inches by 24 inches. And a film array system with 7 to 8 instruments will require at least 72 inches by 24 inches. You'll want to place the computer near the film array instrument for ease of use. Unpack the desktop computer and place it vertically on one end and toward the back of the workbench. Plug in the computer power cord. Place the Ethernet communication switch toward the back and plug in the power cord for the switch. Connect the Ethernet cable to an Ethernet port on the back of the computer system. The other end of the Ethernet cable should be plugged into port 16 of the Ethernet switch. Place the printer in front of the computer. Plug in the printer power cord and USB cable. Connect the keyboard, mouse, and printer to USB ports on the computer. Place the computer stand over the printer. Place the monitor, keyboard, and mouse on top of the computer stand. Plug the monitor into the VGA monitor port on the computer. Unpack the barcode reader stand and install it into the computer riser by threading it into the designated receiver on the left or right side of the riser. It should be installed on the side closest to the film array instrument. Once the barcode reader stand is firmly secured to the riser, unpack the barcode reader and place into the stand. Plug the barcode reader USB cable into the computer. If you purchase the optional film array instrument rack, Unpack it and place it near the computer system. Unpack the film array instrument and place it on the instrument rack. If you're only setting up one instrument, we recommend, for ease of use, that you place the instrument on the lower space provided. Note that the instrument rack has four small round openings, which correspond with the foot pads on the film array instrument. Be sure that you have the foot pads in the four corresponding openings in the instrument rack. Connect the Ethernet cable and instrument power cable to the back of the film array instrument. Thread those cables down into the back of the instrument rack and out to the side towards the computer system. Connect the other end of the Ethernet cable from the film array to port 1 on the Ethernet switch. Now, power on the computer. Turn on the film array instrument by flipping the switch on the back of the film array near the power cord and then give it about two minutes to start up. Unpack the next instrument and place it on the remaining space of the instrument rack. Connect the Ethernet cable and instrument power cable to the back of the second film array instrument. Thread those cables down into the back of the instrument rack and out to the side towards the computer system. Connect the other end of the Ethernet cable from the film array to port 2 on the Ethernet switch. Connect the film array power cable to a power source. Turn on the film array instrument by flipping the switch on the back of the film array near the power cord and then give it about two minutes to start up. To set up a third film array instrument, 
Unpack a second instrument rack. You will notice that each instrument rack has a small slot near the front and back corner of the instrument rack. These slots will receive the instrument rack clip and help safely hold them together. Unpack the rack clip and fit the front tabs of the clip into the front slots of the instrument rack. Gently push the clip down into place, resting against the body of the instrument rack. There will be an obvious snap when the back tabs of the clip fit with the back slots of the instrument rack. Note, be careful not to pinch your fingers when performing this action. Once the second instrument rack is secured into the first instrument rack, unpack the next instrument and place the instrument on the lower space of the two rack spaces. Keep in mind that the instrument rack has four small round openings, which correspond with the foot pads on the film array instrument. Be sure that you have the foot pads in the four corresponding openings in the instrument rack. Connect the Ethernet cable and instrument power cable to the back of the third film array instrument. Thread those cables down into the back of the instrument rack and out to the side towards the computer system through both instrument racks. Connect the other end of the Ethernet cable from the film array to port 3 on the Ethernet switch. Turn on the film array instrument by flipping the switch on the back of the film array near the power cord, and then give it about 2 minutes to start up. Follow these same steps to add up to 4 instrument racks and to set up each additional film array instrument. Note, each additional film array will be plugged into the next available port on the Ethernet connection switch up to port 8. The light on the front of the instrument indicates the instrument status. No light means that the instrument is off. A blinking yellow light indicates that the instrument is being located by the software. A solid green light indicates that the instrument is ready for use. A blinking green light means that the instrument is running and a blinking red light or a blinking purple light indicates an error. In the event that a blinking red or purple error light comes on, please refer to the Film Array Operator's Manual, which came with your instrument, or contact technical support. Chapter 2. Getting Started A. The Film Array Instrument The Film Array is very easy to operate. To turn on the Film Array, flip the switch on the back of the Film Array near the power cord, and then give it about two minutes to start up. The light on the front of the instrument indicates the instrument status. No light means that the instrument is off. A blinking yellow light indicates that the instrument is being located by the software. A solid green light indicates that the instrument is ready for use. A blinking green light means that the instrument is running and a blinking red light or a blinking purple light indicates an error. In the event that a blinking red or purple error light comes on, please refer to the Film Array Operator's Manual, which came with your instrument, or contact technical support. The Film Array also has a second light you should know about. It's located around the pouch loading chamber button, which is the small button on top of the Film Array. If this light is off, the chamber is locked. If the light is solid blue, the chamber is ready for use. If the light is blinking blue, the run is complete and it's safe to remove the pouch. By pressing this button, you'll open up the pouch loading chamber. This chamber is where you'll load your pouch into the film array. It's designed so that you can't put the pouch in incorrectly. However, sometimes the lid won't close all the way. This is usually because you haven't pushed the pouch all the way down. If you find that the pouch loading chamber lid doesn't close all the way, just open it up and firmly push down on the pouch. That should do the trick. Chapter 2. Getting Started B. The Film Array Pouch Each Film Array pouch is a disposable, self-contained, closed system that houses all the chemistry required to isolate, amplify, and detect nucleic acid from a sample. The Film Array pouch is divided into three sections. The first section of the pouch contains the freeze-dried reagents. This section also has the hydration and sample injection ports. The second plastic film portion of the pouch is where the chemical processes take place. The third section of the film array pouch is the small plastic tab which contains all the details and identifiers of the pouch including the barcode. 
Each pouch is identified with a lot number, a serial number, and an expiration date. This information is printed at the top of each pouch and everything but the expiration date is encoded in the barcode. The pouch also has a space where you may choose to manually place your own sample identification barcode or write in an identifier. Chapter 3. Preparing a pouch using film array injection vials. Testing with the film array panel consists of five key steps. Preparing the pouch, hydrating the pouch, preparing the sample mix, loading the sample mix, and running the pouch. Just like any other test you do, it's very important to maintain a clean environment and avoid contamination of the sample and yourself. Thoroughly clean the work area and the film array pouch loading station with freshly prepared 10% bleach or suitable disinfectant, followed by a water rinse. Gloves and other personal protective equipment should be used when handling pouches and specimens. For purposes of this video only, we will not be using a protective shield so that you may see each step more clearly. However, when running actual tests, always do your work behind a protective shield or in a biosafety cabinet, and always follow the proper procedures set forth by your lab. It's also important that you never open a pouch until you're ready to load the pouch and run the test. Only one film array pouch should be loaded at a time. Once the pouch is loaded, it should be promptly transferred to the instrument to start the run. After the run is complete, the pouch should be discarded in a biohazard container. When you're ready to run a test, remove the film array pouch from its vacuum sealed package by tearing or cutting the notched outer packaging and opening the protective aluminum canister. Place the film array pouch into the film array pouch loading station. To do so, hold the pouch so that the barcoded label is upright and readable, and then slide the flexible film portion of the pouch into the slot at the base of the loading station. In the correct configuration, the inlet ports on both ends of the rigid plastic part of the pouch will point up, and the red and blue labels on the pouch will align with the red and blue arrows on the film array pouch loading station. Note. If the vacuum seal of the pouch packaging is not intact, the pouch may still be used. Attempt to hydrate the pouch using the blue-capped hydration vial. If hydration is successful, continue with the run. If hydration fails, discard the pouch and use a new pouch to test the sample. Place a blue-capped hydration injection vial in the blue well of the pouch loading station. Place a red-capped sample injection vial in the red well of the pouch loading station. Twist the hydration injection vial, leaving the cap in the pouch loading station, and insert the tip of the cannula into the hydration injection port of the pouch located directly below the blue arrow of the pouch loading station. Push down forcefully in a firm and quick motion until you hear a faint pop and feel an ease and resistance. The correct volume of liquid will be pulled into the pouch by vacuum. Next, verify that the pouch has been hydrated. Flip the barcode label down and check to see that fluid has entered the reagent wells located at the base of the rigid plastic part of the pouch. Small air bubbles may be seen. If the pouch fails to hydrate, verify that the seal of the port was broken by ensuring that the vial cannula was fully inserted into the hydration port. If the pouch fails to hydrate, retrieve a new pouch and repeat the pouch hydration process. It should be noted that dry reagents appear as white pellets. Hold the sample buffer ampule so that the tip is facing up. Note, use care to avoid touching the tip during handling as this may introduce contamination. Gently squeeze the center of the ampule until the seal snaps. Then invert it over the red sample injection vial and dispense the sample buffer using a slow forceful squeeze followed by a second squeeze. Avoid generating excessive bubbles. Using the transfer pipette provided in the test kit, draw the sample. Add the sample to the red sample injection vial. Tightly close the lid of the sample injection vial and mix by gently inverting at least three times. Return the sample injection vial to the pouch loading station. 
Slowly unscrew the sample injection vial from the cap and pause for three to five seconds. Note, it's important to pause after unscrewing the sample injection vial to avoid sample leakage and contamination of the work area. Remove the sample injection vial, leaving the cap in the pouch loading station, and insert the cannula tip into the sample injection port in the pouch located directly below the red arrow of the pouch loading station. Push down forcefully in a firm and quick motion until you hear a faint pop and feel an ease and resistance. The correct volume of liquid will be pulled into the pouch by vacuum. Verify that the sample has been loaded. Flip the barcode label down and check to see that fluid has entered the reagent well next to the sample loading port. If the pouch fails to pull sample from the sample injection vial, the pouch should be discarded. Retrieve a new pouch and repeat steps starting from the beginning. Discard the hydration injection vial and sample injection vial following the proper procedures set forth by your lab. Record the sample ID in the provided area on the pouch label or affix a barcoded sample ID and remove the pouch from the pouch loading station. Refer to the instruction booklet for each specific pouch type for further information about details and specific volumes necessary for each individual panel. Chapter 4. Preparing a pouch using film array loading syringes. Testing with the film array panel consists of five key steps. Preparing the pouch, hydrating the pouch, preparing the sample mix, loading the sample mix, and running the pouch. Just like any other test you do, it's very important to maintain a clean environment and avoid contamination of the sample and yourself. Thoroughly clean the work area and the film array pouch loading station with freshly prepared 10% bleach or suitable disinfectant, followed by a water rinse. Gloves and other personal protective equipment should be used when handling pouches and specimens. For purposes of this video only, we will not be using a protective shield so that you may see each step more clearly. However, when running actual tests, always do your work behind a protective shield or in a biosafety cabinet, and always follow the proper procedures set forth by your lab. It's also important that you never open a pouch until you're ready to load the pouch and run the test. Only one film array pouch should be loaded at a time. Once the pouch is loaded, it should be promptly transferred to the instrument to start the run. After the run is complete, the pouch should be discarded in a biohazard container. When you're ready to run a test, open the outer packaging of the pouch and remove it from the canister. Remove the film array pouch from its vacuum sealed package by tearing or cutting the notched outer packaging and opening the protective aluminum canister. Note, if the vacuum seal of the pouch packaging is not intact, the pouch may still be used. Attempt to hydrate the pouch using the steps below. If hydration is successful, continue with the run. If hydration fails, discard the pouch and use a new pouch to test the sample. Place the film array pouch into the film array pouch loading station. To do so, hold the pouch so that the barcoded label is upright and readable, and then slide the larger flexible film portion of the pouch into the slot at the base of the loading station. In the correct configuration, the injection ports on both ends of the rigid plastic part of the pouch will point up, and the red and blue labels on the pouch will align with the red and blue arrows on the film array pouch loading station. Place a blue capped hydration solution vial in the blue well of the film array pouch loading station. Place a red capped sample buffer vial in the red well of the film array pouch loading station. Remove the blue labeled pouch hydration syringe from the packaging. If the cannula or tip is not firmly attached to the syringe, hold the capped tip and rotate the syringe to tighten. Remove the cap from the hydration solution vial. Using the pouch hydration syringe, which has a blue cap, draw the hydration solution to the one milliliter mark on the syringe, taking care to avoid the formation of bubbles. If you notice bubbles at the base of the syringe, leave the tip of the cannula in the hydration solution vial and dislodge the bubbles by gently tapping the side of the syringe with your finger. The bubbles will float up to the plunger. Note, do not remove air bubbles by inverting the syringe and expelling liquid. Insert the cannula tip into the hydration injection port in the pouch fitment located directly below the blue arrow of the film array pouch loading station. While holding the body of the syringe, 
push down forcefully in a firm and quick motion until you hear a faint pop and feel an ease in resistance. The correct volume of liquid will be pulled into the pouch by vacuum. There's no need to use the plunger. Note, do not push the syringe plunger. Injecting liquid will cause the pouch to overfill. Verify that the pouch has been hydrated. Most of the liquid will have been drawn out of the syringe. Also, check to see that fluid has entered the hydrated reagents in the reagent wells. These are the 11 wells located at the base of the rigid plastic part of the pouch. Flip the barcode label down to see the reagent wells. Small air bubbles may be seen. If the pouch fails to hydrate, verify that the seal of the port was broken. If the pouch fails to hydrate, retrieve a new pouch and repeat the pouch hydration process. It should be noted that dry reagents appear as white pellets. Remove the cap from the sample buffer vial. Using the transfer pipette provided in the test kit, draw the sample into the transfer pipette. Add the sample to the red-capped sample buffer vial and gently pipette up and down to mix. Discard the transfer pipette following the proper procedures set forth by your lab. Remove the red-labeled sample loading syringe from the packaging. If the cannula tip is not firmly attached to the syringe, hold the capped tip and rotate the syringe to tighten. Using the sample loading syringe, draw the sample mix into the syringe, taking care to avoid the formation of bubbles. If you notice bubbles at the base of the syringe, leave the tip of the cannula in the sample buffer vial and dislodge the bubbles by gently tapping the side of the syringe with your finger. The bubbles will float up to the plunger. Note, to avoid contaminating the work area, do not remove air bubbles by inverting the syringe and expelling liquid. Insert the cannula tip into the sample injection port in the pouch fitment located directly below the red arrow of the film array pouch loading station. While holding the body of the syringe, push down forcefully in a firm and quick motion until you hear a faint pop and feel an ease and resistance. The correct volume of liquid will be pulled into the pouch by vacuum. There is no need to use the plunger. Note, do not push the syringe plunger. Injecting liquid will cause the pouch to overfill. Verify that the sample has been loaded. Most of the liquid will have been drawn out of the syringe. Flip the barcode label down and check to see that fluid has entered the reagent well next to the sample loading port. If the pouch fails to pull sample from the sample loading syringe, the pouch should be discarded. Retrieve a new pouch and repeat steps starting from the beginning. Note, to reduce the risk of exposure to hazardous or potentially infectious material, do not recap the syringes. Dispose of syringes and vials following the proper procedures set forth by your lab. Record the sample ID in the provided area on the pouch label or affix a barcoded sample ID and remove the pouch from the film array pouch loading station. Refer to the instruction booklet for each specific pouch type for further information about details and specific volumes necessary for each individual panel. Chapter 5. Running a Film Array Pouch Running a Film Array Pouch is simple, easy, and fast. You only need to follow the on-screen instructions of the Film Array software. The Film Array software includes a step-by-step -step tutorial that will walk you through loading the film array pouch into the film array instrument, demonstrates how to perform a run, analyzes results, and prints reports. Open the instrument lid, if not already open, or select an instrument from the instrument dashboard. Insert the prepared film array pouch into the film array instrument. Position the pouch with a black array on the right side and the film portion of the pouch entering the instrument first. The red and blue labels on the pouch should be aligned with the red and blue arrows on the film array instrument. There is an audible click when the pouch is securely in place. Scan the barcode on the film array pouch label using the barcode scanner provided. Be sure that all barcode labels are as smooth and as flat as possible. Note, a pouch must be placed in the instrument prior to being scanned. A warning message is displayed if the scanned pouch is not in the instrument. Enter a sample ID manually or by using the barcode scanner. Confirm or select the correct protocol for your sample type from the protocol drop-down list. 
refer to the instruction booklet for each specific pouch type for further information about selecting the appropriate protocol. Enter a username and password in the Name and Password fields. If you are a new Film Array user, click the Add Operator button in the Operator box to add yourself as an operator. This opens a dialog box in which your username, first and last name, and a password need to be entered. The Confirm Password field displays red dots until the Password and Confirm field match. Click OK to add yourself as an operator. Adding yourself as an operator is a one-time task. Subsequent runs only require your username and password to be entered. The font color of the name and password is red until the username is recognized by the software. Close the Film Array instrument lid. Click the Start Run button on the software screen. The software will start the run on the instrument. As your test is running, the software will display a checklist of steps on the screen. It'll let you know when each step is complete, the number of minutes left in the run, and where you are in the process. When the test is complete, the software automatically interprets the results and displays the report. If you have the computer hooked up to a printer, the software can be configured to automatically print a report. Refer to the Film Array Operators Manual to learn how to enable the Auto Print Report preference. You may be interested to know that the software keeps a log of all runs. This allows you to look up previous runs using the Browse Runs tab. This feature also allows you to search for previous runs, make notes, add tags, and sort past results using a variety of selection criteria. The right click menu in the Browse Runs tab allows you to perform various administrative functions, such as importing or exporting run files, archiving run files from your database, and printing and saving reports. Please refer to the Operator's Manual for more detail about the advanced and administrative software functions. Chapter 6 The Film Array Instrument Report When a run is finished, the View Report tab will open automatically on the control screen. But if you're on the overall dashboard, a report icon will appear in the top right corner. Click on the icon for that instrument to view the report. If the instrument is connected to a printer, the software can be configured to automatically print the report at the end of the run. Refer to the Film Array Operator's Manual to learn how to enable the Auto Print Report Preference. At any time when viewing a report, the operator can select the Print button to print the report or save to save the report as a PDF file. Note, refer to the instruction booklet for the appropriate Film Array Reagent Kit for more details about the information provided in the report. Now, let's review the report. This report is divided into three sections, a run summary, result summary, and run details. The first section, the run summary section, lists the sample identification, date and time of the run, name of any detected pathogens, any equivocal results, and the status of the controls. If the report indicates that the controls failed, the sample should be retested. The second section, the Results Summary section, lists the results for each pathogen tested. A checkmark and the word detected appear next to any pathogens detected in the sample. The words not detected appear next to pathogens not detected in the sample. The word equivocal appears next to any pathogen for which the software is unable to provide either a detected or not detected result. This means that the results are inconclusive and the sample should be retested. If an invalid result occurs, this typically means that there has been an error with the controls, software, or the instrument. The sample should be retested, and if the problem continues, contact our technical support team. The third section, the Run Details section, provides additional information about the run, including the type of pouch used, the lot and serial number, operator ID, instrument ID, protocol, and run status. Please refer to the Film Array Operator's Manual to get more detailed information about run reports. Chapter 7, 
decontamination and preventative maintenance. We recommend that after every test and at least once a day or whenever a spill occurs, the pouch loading station be wiped down with a 10% bleach solution, followed by a water wipe. At least once a week, the surface of the film array instrument and work area should be wiped down with a 10% bleach solution. This should be followed by a water wipe to avoid buildup of bleach deposits on the bench top and instrument surfaces. At least once a week, the lens of the barcode reader should be cleaned using a lens cloth and cleaner. It's possible for the plastic film of a pouch to be punctured or otherwise leak. If you detect a pouch leak, there's a possibility of contamination, so we recommend thoroughly decontaminating the instrument and any other potentially exposed areas by wiping three times with a 10% bleach solution followed by two water wipes. The final step is to run a pouch using water instead of a sample. This is referred to as running a blank test, and it helps ensure that no contamination has occurred. The blank pouch results should show not detected for all pathogens. It's recommended to completely shut down the system on a weekly basis. Ensure that the film array software is closed properly prior to turning off the computer. If at any time you have a question about your film array system, or you encounter problems when running your film array, please contact us. Again, we provide telephone technical support at 1-800-735-6544. Or you can email us directly at support at biofiredx.com.